Hello everyone, Luke here, and today I'm going to be doing something that nobody has done in a super long time. Read the newspaper. Let's see, let's just see the headlines. Uh, millions of Skylanders go missing, Booster Course Pass releases its final wave, and this one's interesting. People debate over which system is better, the Super Nintendo or the Sega Genesis. Well, shoot, I guess I review consoles, right? I could give my opinion on this, right? So what system do I think is better? I don't really know, but why don't we go through the history of both the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis to see which one's better. Then after we can kind of compete them in certain categories, so let's get into it. We need to go back to 1985, and yes, I'm aware, I talk about the NES in literally every single episode, which kind of shows how influential it really was. Let's say it's the mid to late 1980s and you want to get a gaming system. You really only have one real option. Back then especially, there were dozens of gaming systems, but they were all jokes. Most had less than 10 games and costed more than a liver transplant. The NES actually gave you high quality games and it wasn't too expensive. It was really the only option. Some of the biggest games on the NES were Super Mario Bros, Legend of Zelda, Duck Hunt. The list just went on and on. So while there were many other systems out there, the NES went mostly unrivaled. But hardware got more advanced, so Nintendo worked on their next system to release in 1990. And honestly, it was looking like it was gonna be the only option this generation. But then on August 14th, 1989, one year before Nintendo was going to release their system, a little company called Sega released their system, the Sega Genesis, with 74 megabytes of RAM, and it also had a 16-bit processor. Now, Sega before this was known for the Sega Master System, which actually sold quite well. It sold around 10 million units, which, like, props to them for selling a system with no Mario game on it. I mean, especially back then, 10 million was more than a success. So people knew who Sega was, and they were going to try their best to take Nintendo down. But Nintendo was something that Sega didn't, a mascot. I mean, everybody on Earth knows who Mario is. He even has a movie now. That was an issue with a lot of your video game systems back then. They just had no mascot. They had a ton of games, but that was kind of it. When you hear Nintendo, you probably think of Mario, or another one of Nintendo's mascots. When you hear Atari, probably not as much comes to mind. So, Sega made their mascot for the system, Sonic the Hedgehog. The whole thing about Sonic is the speed, kind of like how Mario's whole thing is jumping. He's an iconic looking guy. Sonic the Hedgehog came out shortly after the system released, and without Sonic, I believe that the Genesis would have not taken off as much as it did. The game Sonic the Hedgehog is a very fast paced and shows how fun platformers could be. Every jump an enemy feels like it's placed intentionally. You can just run through it all, but the skilled players can discover secret areas and other routes. The exploring part of the game is another amazing part. In Mario, there might be like one or two secret areas per level, but in Sonic, there's like three or four main routes with tons of secrets in between. So combine that with the speed of the game and you get one of the best experiences in a video game. And then you get to the second level and the game slows down. Like, a lot. I mean, the rest of the game's fine, but the first level is definitely the best part. And it also helped that Sega marketed the hell out of the Genesis to make sure that everybody knew what it was. Also dissing Nintendo in the process, because for the first time ever, Nintendo was actually scared of a competitor. The Super Nintendo came out November 21st, 1990 in Japan. August 23rd, 1991 in North America, and April 11th, 1992 everywhere else, with the game Super Mario World, which we'll talk about more in a bit. In the start, Sega was winning. It was looking like Sega would be the next king of video game consoles. Many fans of the original NES switched sides and bought a Genesis instead of a Super Nintendo. What I just said is literally the dictionary definition for the word treason. But Nintendo sold some tricks up their sleeves. One of the biggest knocks against Sega was that the Super Nintendo had Mode 7 graphic capabilities which made a pretty realistic effect for 3D. Also, the Super Nintendo could display way more colors. Sega then came back in Nintendo and released the Sega CD, which was a pretty underutilized add-on for the system, but I like it a lot. It deserves its own episode later down the line. But Sega still was entirely in the clear. A few years after the system launched, Sega got into some heat for its games, mainly Mortal Kombat and Night Trap. It wasn't necessarily about the games themselves, but more so just the lack of age ratings on them. Both of the games containing a ton of violence and whatever this was, were being bought by children. Sega was in a few lawsuits, which I really think hurt them in the long run. Both systems battled hard, and for the longest time, Sega was in the lead. But in the end, Nintendo ended up winning 49.10 million Super Nintendo sold, compared to Sega's 30.75 million Genesis's. Genesis. Ge Genesis is. Genesis? I'm confused, I don't know what I'm putting in the script. Nintendo managed to sell more, and only two generations later, Sega was out of the game console market entirely. Now, if Sega won and Nintendo was the one in that spot, they could have very easily had the same fate. I mean, we could be living in a world where Mario wasn't a thing and Sonic- 
I don't even want to go there. So that was a brief history of the systems, but now let's go into my favorite part of the show. What does Luke think? There are going to be five categories, games, fan base, cost, graphics, and other features. Whoever wins the most points ends up winning the whole thing. First category, we have games. For big first party games, obviously it's Mario vs. Sonic. Super Mario World is the main Mario game for the system and one of the best ones at that. The game is a ton of fun with tons of secrets and power-ups to try, but I think the game for the most part played it pretty safe. It has new ideas, but they feel really similar to the Mario game that came before it. I mean, comparing it to the first Sonic, that game took loads of risks and put a fun spin to the platformer genre with the whole speed mechanic. Running around the top speed was something never really seen to this degree before, only at the other levels the first Sonic game lived up to this one. For the other big games on these systems, the SNES had games like Super Mario Kart, Donkey Kong Country Returns, F-Zero, and Metroid. Honestly, there was just tons of variety and loads of different games and genre. Meanwhile, the big Genesis lineup was Sonic 1, Sonic 2, Sonic 3, Sonic CD, Sonic & Knuckles, Sonic 3D Blast. I feel like all the big games for the Genesis were just Sonic games and there weren't many other types of games. Nintendo just had better games in my opinion, they just had higher quality and a bigger variety than Sega, so the point here is going to go to Nintendo. Fanbase. Now, this one's going to be more of a bit of a subjective pick because I don't really know what this category is supposed to mean, but I imagine the average Sega fan being like 5 years old, so I'm just going to give the point to Nintendo. The next category is graphics. First off, let me just say, both systems are very impressive. You compared them to the last generation, and they both did a really good job with the graphics. Both even managed to tap into 3D games a bit, and while the Super Nintendo looks better for 3D games, 3D is not what the systems were really built to run on. So just by 2D graphics alone, I have to say, the Genesis has really crisp visuals, like the backgrounds in Sonic. Not to mention games like Night Trap, we get visuals as crisp as a VHS, and for that, I think Sega gets the point here. The next category is cost. The Super Nintendo launched with a price of $199, or about $450 in today's money. Meanwhile, the Genesis sold for $189, which was cheaper technically, but they're so close that we might as well go off of game prices instead. Games for the Super Nintendo costed $50 to $60, or about $90 to $100 cost inflation today. A Sega Genesis game costed about the same, so honestly, I tried to do everything here. I think they costed about the same, let's just give it a tie. Other features, now this category wasn't even close. Sega added so much to the Genesis. I mean, Sega really cared about adding extra features to the Genesis, the main one being the Sega CD. The Sega CD was an add-on that I'm sure Sega knew wouldn't even sell that well when they made it, but they decided to make it anyways. So, I mean, just for that, I gotta give the point to them. Well, shoot, it's a tie again. I mean, I don't even plan for this stuff. Both systems have their ups and downs. Personally, I'm more of a Nintendo fan, but honestly, both stand better in their own ways. So it's really up to you. Anyway, so I applied for a newspaper station and I just decided to send them the whole script to this video 